I know it's, I've been wanting to kind of get down to Georgia and see what it's like. So uh, I'm actually thoroughly impressed. Uh, it's very beautiful down here. Uh, great church here. Um, and uh, I definitely enjoyed my stay with the Black family. I actually fly out tonight, so keep me in your prayers and hope I don't get lost. <laughs> um, uh, but it's, it's really been a, a great time to be here. Um, definitely love, love seeing all the believers and all the southern accents. Y'all are just so kind. So, uh, but uh, I don't get a lot of that back home, so I like talking like a southerner. So, <laughs> um, but quick testimony before I, I don't, I don't want to be here up, up here all day, and I know I have a um, kind of disability of talking too much. <laughs> so, um, but actually back home, um, I know I had been asking God for a while that he'd help me be a better witness. I think that's all of our prayers, um, but a witness, being a witness to me, it's just, I've always been wanting to do that um, in a greater way. Um, and I, I actually, I was at the park at about 11 o'clock at night with some friends. And it was something like you'd see in like a haunted movie, like two guys come out of the shadows, like outside of the trees. And I didn't, I, I didn't really think anything of it at the moment. Um, but one of the gentlemen sat down on the bench um, near the basketball court. And the other one started talking to me, asking me where I went to school, and I was I was telling him like everything about me, like where I was from, like what I what I did, what I wanted to do, and um, I, the the brother that sat on the bench, he kind of overheard me. So when the guy I was done, when when he was done talking to me, um, the guy on the bench came over to me, and he 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 started he started kind of asking the same questions and kind of making sure I was telling the same thing to him, and. Um, he asked me if I knew somebody at the school I went to. I was like, yeah, yeah, I know him. He's like, well, I'm his uncle. So it was, we kind of got acquainted there. And he asked me if I partied with him. I was like, sir, I'm, I'm, I'm a Christian. I don't, I don't party. And he, his whole demeanor changed. He started tearing up. And he, he told me that he had actually been a Christian. He'd felt he's fallen, he's fallen away. And he asked, he had, he'd recently asked God if he could send somebody to him to help him bring him back to him. And to me, he, he, he told me I may, I, may, I may be that guy, I may be not, but he, he just felt like he should talk to me. So I talked to him for till about actually 1.30 in the morning. That was a long night for me, but it was well worth it. He repented, and he, he surrendered his life to Christ right there on the bench, and I started picking him up, taking him to church. So. He was definitely very... Um, open to the word and you don't see a lot of that nowadays so um it's it he's his, his name is brother donnie make sure uh if y'all could please remember him in prayer and because I've, I've been talking about baptism and he's he's praying about getting baptized and he's uh he's changing his life um little by little so please remember him if you would is the lamb who was slain holy holy is he sing a new song to him who sits on heaven's mercy seat worthy is the Lamb who was slain, holy, holy is he. Sing a new song to him who sits on heaven's mercy. Seat. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come with all creation I sing praise to the King of Kings and you are my everything and I will 
adore you. Blessing and honor, strength and glory and power be to you, the only wise King. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. With all creation I sing praise to the King of Kings, and you are my everything, and I will adore you. Filled with wonder, awestruck wonder, at the mention of your name. Jesus, your name is power, breath and living water, such a marvelous mystery. the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come with all creation I sing praise to the King of Kings and you are my everything and I will adore you With all creation I sing praise to the King of Kings, and you are my everything, and I will adore you. Him, praise him. Love him, love him, love him in the morning, love him in the noontime, love him, love him, let's just love him till the sun goes down, we need to serve him, serve him, serve him in the morning, Serve him in the noontime, serve him, serve him, serve him till the sun goes down. Oh, let's just praise him, praise him, praise him in the morning, praise him.
praise Him in the noontime. Praise Him. Praise Him. Let's praise Him till the sun goes down. Oh, let's just praise Him. Praise Him. Praise Him in the morning. Praise Him in the noontime. Praise Him. Praise Him. Let's just praise Him till the sun goes down. God bless you, saints. My only request is if you know the song, please sing along with me. Okay. The blood that Jesus shed for me way back on Calvary. It's the blood from day. Oh, it reaches to the highest mountain, yes it does, and it flows through the lowest valley, it's the blood that gives strength. From day to day, it will never lose its power. It soothes my doubts and calms my fears. And it dries all of my tears. The blood that gives me my strength from day to day, it will never lose its power. To the highest mountain And it flows to the lowest valley I know it's the blood that gives me my strength From day to day Let me hear you sing that verse again. Oh, it reaches to the highest mountain. Yes, it does. And it flows through the lowest valley. I know it's the blood that gives me my strength from day today it will never lose its power the blood the blood that gives me my strength from day to day it will never lose its power
lose its power. Amen. Oh, just change the order of the service as we all stand. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. Oh, Jesus, I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart, I want to see you. Oh, Jesus, I want to see you. To see you high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing, holy, oh, high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing, holy. that our desire tonight and come not to hear from man but to hear from God I'm going to sing a song if they don't run off you can be seated amen I'll try to sing a song anyway <laughs> amen we sure appreciate this opportunity appreciate brother Dale like a dad to us and I told him I was his red headed stepson and he he stuck with me. <laughs> I've been adopted into the family. Amen. We sure appreciate being part of the family of God. I'm thankful that he handpicked us. Amen. For this hour. And he chose us and predestinated us. And nothing that Satan can do or say can change us from what we are. I'm glad of that. And we sure appreciate the Lord for Appreciate each and every one of you. I'd like to go home with each and every one of you, but I don't think y'all could feed me, so <laughs> I won't I won't put that burden on you. Amen. It's called God on the Mountain. If you can, you can help me sing it. Life is easy when you're up on the mountain. And you've got peace of mind Like you've never known But then things change And you're down in the valley Don't lose faith, child for you're never alone For the God on the mountain Is still God in the valley When things go wrong He'll make them right God of the good times is still God in the bad times. The God of the day is still God in the night. 
We talk of faith when we're up on the mountain. But talk comes so easy when life's at its best. But it's down in the valley of trials and temptation. That's when faith is really put to the test. Sing it with me. For the God on the mountain is still God in the valley. When things go wrong, He'll make them right. And the God of the good times is still God in the bad times. The God of the day is still God in the night. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Troubles, night or day, or winds or rain does not change him. He's still God. He's still he's got his position. He's still on the throne. Still making intercession for us. Still, still there. Nothing changes him. Nothing catches him by, by surprise. Sometimes we get caught off guard. God's never caught off guard. He already knows what the devil's going to do before he does it. He's already or, uh, preordained him to do it. <laughs> I told him, I said, this fight's rigged. <laughs> I said, he's already told him what to do and how to do it, and he's already got the counterpunch for him. So... I'm thankful God is always in control of everything. We sure appreciate you. I'd like to you stand for the reading of the word with me. I'd like to turn over to the book of James chapter 1. I'd like to take a little thought tonight. The attitude of the hearer. The attitude of the hearer. Ain't you glad God helps us with that? That's one thing we all need a little adjustment with sometimes is our attitude. You know, we always say you need attitude adjustment. God knows how to adjust our attitude in order to determine our altitude. Sometimes we don't fly no higher than our attitude. So I'm glad God takes care of us. Start with verse 22. James chapter 1, verse 22. He said, Be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only. He said, Deceiving your own selves. For if any man be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, He's like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he is. But whosoever looketh into the perfect law of liberty continueth therein. He being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. Father, Lord Jesus, we're looking in the mirror again. And Father, Lord, we're looking, Lord, and we're asking you to help us, Lord. Because, Father, a man can only do so much, Lord. And, Father, I've done as much as I can do, Lord. Now I'm asking you, Lord, now to come and use the little gift you've given me, Lord. And let me get out of your way, Lord. And let me just be a microphone that's mute, Lord. And you speak through my lips, Lord. That, Father, we'd have a testimony upon our hearts and in our lives, when this all would come to an end, Lord, this service, and we'd have a testimony, did not our hearts burn within us as you spoke to us along the way. Now grant it, Lord, and we'll give you the praise, honor, and glory, for we ask it in Jesus Christ's name. Amen and amen. You may be seated. The attitude of the hearer. James is telling us here, he's telling us to be ye doers of the word, not hearers only. A lot of people hear. But very few do. It's like when you're a child, sometimes your parents will tell you, you need to take the garbage out. And you heard them say it, 
but you didn't do it. So there's a penalty for that when you don't when you don't do what you hear. The same way with God, God tells us we're sons and daughters of God. We look into this mirror, and God tells us by His His order, His word, it tells us we are now sons and daughters of God. We've not changed our position. God has not changed his thoughts. He's eternal God. He never changes in any way. He said, I hear you, O Israel. I'm the Lord thy God, and I change not. So he changes his not his thoughts. But a lot of times we hear what the word says about us. We look at the word, Brother Sam. We study the word. We believe the word, but then we forget that we are part of the word. Right. We're just we hear sometimes, but we fail to react the right way toward the word like we should. We fail to respond. We fail to have the right attitude. And I believe the prophet told us, he said, the right mental attitude toward any divine promise will bring it to pass. Amen. So it's not God's attitude toward his word. He's already said what he said he would do, and he'll do just what he says. It's our attitude and how we approach his word. Right. We say, Lord, we may not understand it, but God, we're going to believe it anyway. We're going to do it because you said we are. When we look into this mirror of the Word of God, we look in the mirror and it says, I'm a son. You are now sons and daughters of God. Not going to be, not might be, you already are. And if we could ever get to that situation where we're into that position that with revelation, knowing who we are, then Brother Brown said when we get in our position, recognize who we are, and recognize those two spirits working within the framework then, and withstand them, a lot of people recognize the Spirit's working within the framework, but we're standing. He says, Satan will become powerless. See, Satan wants us to have the attitude of, well, we, can go, we went this far, but that's good enough. He's like, that's great. I want you to stop right there because you're not going on to withstand me. But I'm here to tell him this morning, this afternoon, take notice on him. We're here, and we're going to withstand you. We're, we're going to fight back. We're going to press toward the mark of the high calling in Christ Jesus. We are here because we are overcomers. Paul said, he causeth me to triumph. He made us winners. He said, you'll overcome by the word of your testimony and the blood of the Lamb. The blood of the Lamb is sufficient. It's the, it's the sustainer. It's the power giver. The life that was in the blood come back upon us as believers. We are more than able. Well, sometimes we take the attitude down. Let's just look at the children and the, the, the Hebrew children just for a minute. Here they are in, here they are in Egypt. They've been in there 400 years. They've read the scrolls. They, what the prophet said, they'd be there 400 years. And, and God would raise up a deliverer to deliver them out. Here he goes, get... And, and starts dealing with the man that he thought he was a brother Terrence. He thought he was a failure. He thought he'd missed it. He thought he, he was done for. He went in. He was in raised in Egypt forty years, and the only thing he did by his own ability was kill one stinking Egyptian. So here he goes out into the desert, discouraged, defeated. Beat up. Sometimes we go into a desert. Sometimes to recognize we're still what God said we was. We just don't realize. We, we don't know the reason we went there because we didn't go the right way the first time. So he's trying to get us focused back on him. He's the answer to it. So here, here here's this. Here's the prophet. No other one. I, I guarantee you Moses walking around. Well, Lord, my mother told me this, and and by the scripture said it. I was going to be the one, but Lord, I messed this thing up. Something's happened. Maybe I ain't the right one. Maybe I'm not the one that's supposed to be doing it. And, and, and to, to the extent he ain't the one, but he had to yield his vessel to be used to be done that. So here he comes. But I love how the scripture said, he said, and he seen that flame up on the mountain, but he said, something happened. Something happened there when he turned, his attitude changed. He turned aside to see what was going on. Sometimes God has to get us in a place of a desert, into a place of, of, of heartaches and trouble sometimes to get us to turn aside to see where the main source is coming from. He had to meet the pillar of fire for himself. And when he turned aside and went to see what was going on, then he had his commission. He had done, he, he received the voice of the sign. And he, and when he told him what to do, and he made all kinds of excuses. His attitude was still wavered a little bit. He said, well, I can't speak good. Uh, I'm not eloquent of speech. Make God mad. 
I mean, you know, we, we try to make all kinds of excuses. We try to give God all kinds of attitude. You know, and like Brother Brown said, he said, when a man, God has to chase every man down he calls to preach. I mean, sometimes I get worried when a man says, I want to be a preacher. And I always tell him, I want you to. If, if that's what you want to do, do it. But I mean, is that what God wants you to do? I mean, if, if, it's, if it's God calling you, you can't get away from him. When God calls you, automatically your thing as a, as a human being is to run. It's to run and say, Lord, not me. Not me, Lord. There's many more qualified. Many more men should use a call. Well, pick one of those. But then when you meet that pillar of fire, and he gives you a commission, he said, Moses, take your shoes off. I'm going to show you something, Moses, that I can step into you, and I'm going to be the deliverer. See, what he did, he wanted to take complete control of Moses. He took control of his failures. He took control of his faults. He took control of his mistakes. He changed his whole attitude. And then here comes an 80-year-old man, no longer with the sword, no longer with the human ability to fight and to, and to defeat the Egyptian. All he had was a little stick. It was a one-man invasion. And, and here he goes down. And where are you going, Moses? And if you look at me like, now? Now, Lord, you're going to use him. But he had got to the place to where he had used himself up to where God could use him. He knew that he had no more ability anymore. He had no way to do anything within himself. That's the way we have to come to God and say, God, I'm used up. There's nothing left that I can use to help you. All I can do is surrender myself completely to you. So here he goes down, walks up to Pharaoh. Let my people go. And Pharaoh looks at him like, wow. This guy's back. He's back. He run like a coward. And here he is back again. He said, I said, let my people go. So here he throws down his stick and it becomes a snake. Pharaoh says, we got those. We got people to do that. You know what I want about a lot of people have challenged this message, but they don't even have the sticks of Janus and Jambres. They have nothing to throw down to match it. Nothing to match it. But little when, when Satan tried to match it, it was consumed by the original. Thought that God had it. He swallowed the other serpents, picked it back up. The Hebrew children heard of this. He stick his hand in his side, pull it out, and it'd be to have liberty. He put it back, and it'd be healed again. They seen those things. God brought all those plagues on. God brought every one of those plagues on him to humble Pharaoh. And here's the children of Israel. Their attitude, they go out there, they don't even get probably 100 miles away from Egypt, right to the Red Sea, and they say, let's out here die. Boy, what kind of leader are you, Moses? Boy, you made a mistake. Right here we stand. We can't get Look who's behind us. Do you realize that's the greatest army that the world has seen in our day? They're ready. They're right here on us. They're fixing to consume us. And you let us right here. They failed to see who was leading them. They failed to see God was using Moses. They had the attitude, you're, you're, and they went right back. You failed us again, Moses. And they, they thought, well, maybe, maybe God made a mistake bringing him, calling him to lead us out here. But he said, stand still, and you'll see the salvation of God. Just take time. Take notice what God's doing. Give God a chance. When he said he'd do something, he'd do it. So here, he stretches forth his rod. You ain't never seen a sea open before. Here they go across the Red Sea. It opened up dry land. Two million people walk across it. I imagine the kids was touching the waters. They go looking at the fish swim by. Never seen it before. Get on the other side. Here comes the Egyptians. They didn't slow them down. God moved the pillar of fire and went in front of them. Here they come. They got in there and God said, that's just what I wanted. See, if you can't, if that's not the provided way for you, you're drowned. If you're just following this message and not a part of it, you'll drown in the Red Sea. Because here he come and he knocked the wheels off the chariots. They fell in there. And then guess what? Here come the water. Here come the water, and it drowned them. 
They drowned it there. They got to the tam- Miriam got to the tamarind. They shouted. They sung the song. And he said, you'll see them no more. No more will you see them. How many times has our enemy attack, tried to attack us and God would slay it and we see him no more? Yeah. And then here we go right on further with it. And their attitude changed so quickly because they're not, he's not, they think God's not doing what they want to do. They go in there and said, you let us out here and die. We're going to thirst to death. Then you see God drowned him. Why could God not give you water? But their attitude we got to be careful with our attitude toward God and what he's doing. They look and say, and then they've seen this. And then he said, you let us out here to die. This water's bitter. So he does, he throws the stick into the water, the water's good. Go on, we're going to die again. I mean, what faith, what confidence, where is people's faith at? Where was their confidence in? And what God said, hey, I'm going to deliver you. I'm going to take you to a land flowing with milk and honey. Here they go. In their journey again. God calls a rock. Moses smites the rock. Drank the water. Two million people drinking out of a rock. Think about it. I mean, wake up. That just don't happen every day. I've hit many rocks and they didn't know water come out of them. And then they said, you know, then later on, well, you got nothing but water. We're hungry. What you going to feed us? We're going to die. What's our attitude many times? We go from what, Brother Brown says, we're either coming out of a trial or going into one. And here they go into the next trial. Feed us. Angels start cooking food. They feed manna. They eat manna. They even try to hide it and it spoils on them. You've got to have a fresh Experience with God every day. Amen. What you had yesterday will not supply you today. You've got to have a fresh source every day. They eat that and they get tired of the manna. Man, I bet that was the best. My, I can't imagine how good that was. They eat the manna. Oh, we're tired of it. Give us some meat. Here they complain it again. Give us some meat. So God said, okay, send you quail. Enough quail for two million people. I've, ne- I've, 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 I've never seen that many quail at one time. It's a miracle, and they know it. It's a miracle. But their attitude changes so quick. And God says, here, I'm going to lead you right down in here. You're going to, you're going to take the land. It's flowing with milk and honey. Everything's going to just be just like I said. See, we're, no, we don't trust God. We don't trust Him. We, we get so dissatisfied. With something. Well, that's all that preacher preaches on sometimes. Well, maybe that's all you can, you can digest at this time. I mean, in order to go higher, you must have, don't complain about what you've eaten. Say, thank God for what I'm giving. He'll give you something else. But we get to complain with him so much. So here they send out 12 spies down, in, down into the land. There it is. My goodness, can you imagine grapes as big as grapefruits coming back, eat them, tasting them. And two of them believed it. Two of them believed it. Brother Brown said that it was of another spirit. If you look at that in another spirit, it means of another attitude. They had a different attitude than they had the other ten. The other ten came back and said, Wow. Yeah, we got that, but boy, you can't you can't imagine these giants over here. Whoa. My goodness. There is no way we can take those guys. No way we are. And look at the attitude turned them into just what they was. They become an insect. They become a grasshopper. <laughs> Looked in that word, and God said they was going to give it to them. He was going to deliver it to them. And then all they, all they can do is hop around now. We're, we're grasshoppers. We're grasshoppers. Did you see that guy's arms? Did you see that spear? And here two men have caught the attitude of God. Stand up on there and say, we're more than able to take this thing. Look at the fruit. He said what it was. There's the honey. There's the spoils. There it is. It's ours. But Brother Brown said there was 10 lying preachers. They persuaded the people to say, Moses, there's no way. And they rejected the word of God and they wandered in the wilderness for 40 years and died. 
wondered, wondered. Their attitude was wondering. We've been around this around. He said, oh, destroy them. Can you imagine that after seeing all those things? How many times have we seen God do miracles in our church? Miracles on things after uh, promises, after promise, after promise, after promise. And I said, well, something comes up. I don't know if God can do anything about that. Why can't he? Why can't he? Has he lost his power? Has he stepped down and said, Satan, take over? I'm scared. No, he's not. It's our attitude that keeps us from every divine promise of God. It's our attitude in what we hear. They heard, we'll take the land. Ten others said, no way. Look at this. It's impossible. Is anything too hard for God? Satan says, there's no way you're going to make it through this COVID. No way you're going to be able to do this. We're doing it. Why? Because God said we would. He promised in his word that we would do it. I like this little parable. It says, who am I describing? Is the advance of man of our true selves? Its roots are inward, but its fruit is outward. It's our best friend or our worst enemy. It's more honest and more consistent than our words. It's an outward look based upon past experiences. It's a thing that draws people to us or repels them. It ne it's never content until it's expressed. It's the librarian of our past. It's the speaker of our present. It is the prophet of our future. What is it? It's our attitude. Attitude. Your attitude determines where you're at with Christ. Either you take him at his word or you don't take him at his word. Either you grumble and complain. You look at the look at the anointing upon this age. Grumbling, complaining. Why they get, they try to make racism and all this, and we're all one. We're all one. We're for the human race. It's not about, they try to point us into that direction to get us to fight against our brothers and sisters to think, uh, it's not that. Christians don't look at it that way. Amen. We don't look at race. Amen. We look at Christ. Amen. See, he tried to break that down to the woman at the well, the Samaritan. He, she said, you worship in Jerusalem, but us, we worship here. He said, but there's a time coming when you're going to worship me in spirit and truth. He broke the segregation between them. He said, I've come to save all. We are one body. Many members. And he's the head. Oh, hallelujah. What is attitude? And why is it important? Attitude defined as a person's prevailing tendency to respond favorably or unfavorably to an object. A person or a group, or an event, either positive or negative. It's how we think about things or how we feel. Attitudes are formed by what we believe to be true things. We look at the Word and the Word says what we are, but we don't believe it. I'm a failure. I'm this, I'm that. The Bible says you're a son and daughter. You're a child of the King. You're not what Satan tells you you are. Brother Brown said, I'm no longer the son of Charles and Ella Branham. I am the son of the living God. Why was that slave that come over here so special? Because he got treated better? Because they fed him better? They did? No, they asked him, why did he act that way? Because he knew who he was. He was still a king's son, no matter where he was at. He knew his father was a king, and he conducted himself. Like a king's son. That's our problem. Are we conducting ourselves like a king's son or daughter? With our circumstances. Our facial expressions. Get what my wife always said. I can tell you didn't like that because the way you look. And I'm like, mm. i seen that. I'm like, mm. She said, your face will tell on you every time. And it does. Well, somehow I say something, you're like, mm. I thought, what, you th what, you, what was that look for? Well, you know, I have a problem with stupid. <laughs> you know, and when you do something like that, I've tried to, I said, Lord, help me not to 
<laughs> not to be so, mm, just smile. Say, well, God even winked at ignorance at one time. You know, but you know, it's sometimes things happen in our facial expressions. Sometimes the preacher will be preaching and you look and he's, somebody, somebody's going, and then somebody's going, man, I like, and you're like, and everybody say, I enjoyed it. I said, notify your face. It doesn't look that way. It doesn't look that way because it takes more energy to frown than it does to smile. They say, Brother Richard, you smile all the time. I said, because I'm happy. I'm happy. I know what I deserved. I deserved hell, Brother Donnie. And he gave me a free pass. Do not go to jail. He, hit me. he got me a get out of jail pass. And you, and you know your voice shows your attitude sometimes. And somebody will say something, and you go, oh, my. And you're like, what? What? What, did, what was that? And it's, the, it's your voice. I say, God, remember James said, bridle the tongue, the Holy Spirit. Sometimes we, our mouth speaks for us. And, and the Bible said the tongue is a ready rider. And we'll get, if something will start hurting and say, oh, my, Satan, give me these diabetes. He said, oh, thank you. I appreciate you saying that. I sure did. You took them. I give you, this is my arthritis. No, it ain't. It's his. Your blood pressure, that's his. Your problem, they're Satan's. They're not yours. Your sons and daughters of God, they're not yours. In our voice. And they say, did you like it? Yeah, I liked it. You did. <laughs> you, you really didn't like it. Because your voice didn't, your voice, it tells on us. Remember the Bible said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. So we got to have a heart connection with God. We got to watch how we speak and how we act. And you know, you're going down the road and somebody cuts you off. Mm. Maybe they cut you off just to see how you'd act. Brother Brown said, sometimes God sees how you react to an action. I'm saying, God, help me. Help me because we're in the flesh. And if we don't pray like we should, we don't read like we should, our attitude's bad. You don't have to tell your wife you've not been praying or reading your Bible. She knows it. She knows it. And you know it if she ain't. And they come home. Whoa, my goodness. Jump. I'm like, whoa, my goodness. Down. Whoa, my goodness. What have I done now? I mean, in, in the same way with us, is, uh, we shouldn't have to treat one another that way. You know, if we disagree with somebody, we still ought to love them. But Brown said we ought to be able to bitterly disagree with one another and still put your arm around them. That's the attitude God desired. He bitterly disagreed with them. He hated his sin, but he loved the sinner. Hmm? Faith is having a positive attitude about what you can do and not worrying about what you can't do. Your destination is in God's hands. I love that. I love to say this. This is one of my favorite things. God set us on a GPS, God's power to save. And you know your attitude, when the, the little Garmin, I guess that's how you say it, or Garmin, or whatever it is, and you put it in there, you got those in there. And first thing you got to do, Brother Terrence, you got to agree to follow the instructions. And that means no matter what you, well, I know I've, I was traveling one time with my wife and it said, now you need to go down and get on 26 to go to Buford. I said, 26, 20 looks really good. I'm going to Florence anyway. And so here I get on 20 and I'm three hours away from where I should have been. It took me, I took me three hours behind because I did not obey what the GPS said. But when you agree, when you, Brother Brown said, total obedience to every word entitles you to the Holy Spirit. You can't buy, I love it though, sometimes it'll say, recalculating. I've heard the Holy Spirit tell me, recalculating, you're going the wrong way today. You better get back over here. Well, I just want to go over here a little bit, Lord. You get back over here. Yes, Lord. But it recalculates you. In the Holy Spirit, only a son and daughter of God will respond to that. Many of us say there's many ways to heaven. No, there ain't. There's many ways to hell, but one way to heaven, and that's through Jesus Christ. I don't care what nobody says. There's only one way. 
one truth, one life, one water, one baptism, one Lord, one faith. It's one, one, one. That's it. But Brown said it's a one-way highway. There is no U-turns. It's a one-way highway. Go ahead and turn around. You'll fall off. Remember the woman said, Brother Branham, he had that dream. She told her, she, he, she said, Sister, you can't go with them high heel shoes up this way. It won't happen. She said, Oh, yes, it will. I can do what I want to. She went on, and what did he hear? She fell off into the fire. Because her attitude was not responding to the Word of God. Amen. Go on. They say, you don't have to. There ain't no profit for this age. Go on. Bye-bye. I'm walking right here because I know. You know what I'm walking? I'm walking in those bloody footprints. And I'm watching them. Huh? I don't see no bloody footprints over there. I don't see no bloody footprints over there. I'm not following it. When is people going to realize we're following Christ? But when you put that in there, I agree. Then listen to the GPS. And you know what? I am hearing the sound of the GPS telling me now, Brother Sam, you reached your destination. We're right here. And people say, oh, well, no. Uh -oh, get over there. I need to go there. Oh, Go ahead. Go ahead. Go on there if you want to go that way. That ain't what the Lord said. The Bible said this way. He said, straight is the gate. And there is the way that leads to right. But broad is the way that leads to destruction. Oh, I'm just going to go with the crowd. Go ahead. And look where they're going. Watch where they're walking. Watch what it's producing. This is the only message that produces holiness. They say, I can do what I want to now. I'm glad I can't do what I want to because I don't want to. If I done what I wanted to, I would go to hell. Every one of us would because this man loves the world. This man loves the things of the world. But that inward man says, mm -mm -mm -mm. no, you're not. I'm saying, oh, God, thank you, Jesus. Oh, I'm so glad I can still hear your voice. Don't you do that. You know what? When I was out in the world and everything, I got into worse trouble when I didn't listen to my mother. And she, she was my pastor. Remember, she's the fifth gospel. And I wasn't, I was, and I, she'd say, don't you go there. Don't you do that tonight. Don't you go nowhere. I feel funny. And I think, ah, ah. And I'd get into worse trouble. And come back and hoping she'd pet me on the back, Brother Sam, and say, well, you know what she told me? The way of a transgressor is hard, son. I'm like, oh, Mom, please help me. She said, you know better. You know better. We got to be stern with our children. We tell them what's right, and it's not, if they don't do it, it's not your fault. But if you don't tell them, it is your fault. Amen. The Bible said, train up a child in the way it should go, and it will not depart from them. It will not depart from them. It didn't, brother. It did not depart from me. I'd go do something. He said, you know better than that. I think, oh, man, that's just, nah, what was that? Huh? And I'm like, oh, my. He said, you know it better. And I thought, oh, God, please have mercy on me. You know? It's because we don't listen. And then we find ourselves, marriage is wrecked. Church is wrecked. People wrecked because they don't listen to the GPS. They don't listen to Christ. He's got this already mapped out for us. He's got the evacuation wrap, uh, route down pat. He knows the way. He knows how to get there. We've never been there. He has. People say, well, God, you know, if you do it this way, I believe you come out better. He's like, go ahead. And then you're all messed up. And you're like, oh, God, please help me. How did I get in this mess? He said, because you wanted it. Man, I read a quote the other day, Brother Brown said, he said, you know what? He's talking about that, that you, he'd turn you over to a red bait mine and you'd be damned by it. He said, God, if you don't accept the truth, God will make you believe it and then damn you for it. What did he do with the, that scripture? Look at Micah when he came to tell the truth and those prophets was telling something else. They had the scripture. People say, oh, we'll take the Bible. They took the Bible, Brother Sam, but they didn't listen to an ordained prophet. They had 400, but they was liars. 
Because there was a spirit went down and said, I'll be in their mouth. And I lie. Because Ahab had to die. He'd already been cursed for what he did to Nabal. But I said, oh, yeah, you'll be accepted. God, I'm going to be accepted by them. And rejected by God, I'll take God. And even look at the attitude of Ahab. He knew he spoke the truth to him. He said, Give him the, feed him the waters of sorrow and the bread of sorrow. And when I come back, I'll deal with you. Micah said, if you come back at all, God has not spoke to me. And guess what? He didn't come back. And the children of Israel still disobey. And the problem of God, I mean, the attitude toward the word is the attitude of what we hear. We hear something. I don't know why when you preach the truth, brother, I've seen more and more. When you preach the truth strong and hard, I've never seen so many people offended. I'm not saying people here, but if it offends you, what's wrong with it? Why does the truth offend you? You tell them what the prophet said, what the scripture said. You lined up with the scripture and what the prophet said, and they're offended. Well, that ain't the way I believe it. Maybe the way you believe it ain't right. Because if it don't line up with the word of God, this is, this is the road map. This is the road map. That's what Brother Bram did. He didn't, he didn't have some foreign book he was reading out of. He read out of the scriptures. He come back to turn us back to the faith of the fathers. Oh, we don't need you. don't need one. Go ahead. You'll be no more than a denomination. Do what you want to do. Do it quickly. You know what? Look at Judas' attitude when he come up to Christ. He kissed him with a warm kiss. But he had a cold heart. He betrayed the Son of Man with a kiss. Many have betrayed Jesus Christ in this hour with a kiss. They kissed the truth and turned from it. Whew. Do you know how dangerous that is? He said you'd been better off if you'd have never been born. Whew. I said, oh God, don't let me be like that. Let me respond to you. When you say go this way, it may look rough, but God, you're going to help me. I say, God, give me, like David said, give me hinds feet where I can walk on these hard rocks and these things to climb higher. It's not an easy path. What did Danny Henry prophesy? He said, because you have chosen my way. It's a hard way. What do we expect? Cake and ice cream? What do we think? We're on a picnic? We're in a battle. Why do you think he give you a shield? Why do you think he give you the breastplate? Why do you think he give you a sword and a helmet? Because it's a war. Amen. Amen. Oh, and the people, you notice that in the denominations and stuff, and even sometimes people try to teach you, it's going to be, it's going to be easy. I said, it ain't easy. It's tough. Oh, a lot of people talk to talk, but they can't walk to walk. That's what James is saying. Don't just talk it. Do it. And the only way you're going to do it is you've got to have the doer in you. If the doer's not in you, you cannot live this message. You cannot produce this message. If you've not been born again, forget it. I tried to live it and found out, <laughs> ain't going to happen. So I, I turned and said, well, I'm not going to be a hypocrite. But you know what? That didn't change God's attitude toward me. He said, down the line, that, that boy... He's going to come because he's mine. I'm not going to lose one of them. I don't care what he does. But you know what? I am amazed that people walk away with the from the message and have an attitude toward the message. When I walked away, I said, it's truth. I just can't live it. I said, I, I won't touch it. But that's because I had a representation. I said, I can't live and I even get, when God came to me, that special day in my car, a supernatural experience with God, I, went, I said, I never, I'll never go to church again. Boy, wasn't that a lie. He said, to make every man's word a lie, and here's the truth. What did he do? He not only put me in church, he put me behind the pulpit to preach the gospel. I thought, my Lord, no wonder I was running. Satan was trying to run me from the truth. But I tried to give him, I tried to tell him, I said, Lord, I went too far. There's no hope. Don't give up on your children. You know what? If you don't pray for your children and your loved ones and your husbands and your wives, if you don't pray for them, you think Satan's going to start praying? Oh, yes, Lord, help them, please. No. I like what the Lord told me. He said, if you don't pray for them, who will? We have, an, we have the opportunity to pray.
We have the token that we can apply. I told him, I said, I went too far, Lord. But I love those words he spoke to me, brother. He said, you never went far enough. Whew, whew. Brother Sam, I said, sign me up. I'm going all the way. Seal me or kill me. Fill me or throw me away. Set me on fire, God. And guess what? He did. He did. He did. He set me on fire. He said we'd be a consuming fire. It's his fire burning in me. I'm thankful for that. Don't make excuses to him. Just say, Lord, I'm not where I want to be. But God, I know you'll get me where I need to be. And I'm willing to do whatever you want. It may hurt, Lord, but Lord, I'm not going to complain. Do you know the problem with the Israelites is their feet was pointed toward the promise, but their heart was in Egypt. That's why they said we'd be better off if you left us in Egypt. Wow, think about that, Brother Sam. We're better off? That whip, you, you forgot that? You forgot it killing your mama, killing your brother? You forgot that? That's better than what you got now? Man, I'd rather die out in the desert. I'd rather thirst to death than to be back under that. At least I could live, at least you could do what you could do. But they said, but think about that. A lot of people's feet are pointed toward the promise, but their heart's back in the world. They want it, they're still, they got frog religion. They're looking like they're going, but they're looking back. We don't got nothing to look back to. Whew. Boy, when Jesus Christ showed me hell, when he, that day he came to me and he showed me hell, and I said, oh, God, I don't want to get there. And he showed me Calvary. I said, I'll take Calvary. I'll take Calvary. And I've not changed my mind. No matter what Satan does, no matter what comes on me, no matter what happens, I've not changed my mind. I'm not going back. I'm not going to quit. I'm like, I said, God, Either you'll give me strength to press on or I'll die right where I'm at. I refuse to turn back. I refuse to let go of the plow. I said, sometimes, God, you vulcanize my hands to the plow. Sometimes I stumble and it drags me. But I said, God, let me get back up. Let me get back up. And guess what? He gives me grace to do it. It's our attitude. Do you know our behavior or lack of it Shows the way we perform in our task toward God. Oh, I believe. You don't read. You don't study. You don't pray. You don't fellowship your brother and sister. I believe. What do you believe? I'm at, I'm at a question. I ask them, what do you believe? You don't want to go to church. You don't want to, you don't want to do this. You don't want to fellowship. You don't want to. What do you believe? When the Bible says, love one another. And you run one another down and you talk about one another and you beat one another up. That ain't what the Bible says. He said, do good unto those that despitefully use you. Bless them and curse you. Let me tell you here this afternoon. You can't do that unless he's in here. Because hmm? you know what? We're still wanting an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. God had to come and change them because they liked that. They loved that. When they brung that woman in the cult in the act, their attitude was, he'll stone her. But where was the man? Where was the man? It takes two. Where was the man? It was probably that dirty old priest that brung her out there, pushed her out there, said, here she is. Oh, but he just, his attitude was, Let's see how they can handle these words. He said, ye without sin cast the first stone. We're always wanting to throw a stone, but we, don't all, we need to realize we're not worthy to throw it. Mm, when you want to stone your brother, drop it. Drop it and stop it. And say, God, I'm just as guilty as he is. If it wasn't for the grace of God, wasn't for your mercy, wasn't for your powerful grace, I'm just as guilty. He said, I'll change their attitude. And from the eldest to the least, they heard the rocks drop. He said, 
woman wears thine accusers. Whew, the woman. Woo. That was like me. Satan brung me to him. His imps and all his devils shout, He's guilty. He's guilty. Kill him. He said, You thy sin. Cast the first stone. They dropped the stones, brothers and sisters. And when he, he raised his head and said, Richard, where's your accusers? I said, Lord, I have done. He said, Neither do I. Whew. He said, my blood washes you clean. Yes. You are free. Amen. If we don't preach the truth, how will the people be free? Amen. That's the commission. Amen. Preach the truth. Amen. Don't water it down. Amen. Don't sugarcoat it. Tell it like it is. Amen. We're not hotbed plants. Everybody wants to preach to spray them. Shh, shh, shh. Sorry, I don't have a spray bottle. Neither do I have a pacifier. All I have is truth. And to eat the truth, you must have teeth. Eagles eat meat. Paul said, I come to you. Look at that. He said, come to you. That you should have been teachers. But you're still on the milk. My, what a rebuke to them. Change your attitude. Change our attitude toward things. It's not that we... And Satan wants us to get the attitude. <laughs> it ain't happening to nobody but me. God's punishing me. If you sin, repent. If you ain't, say, God, you found me worthy to go through this. But I know that if you've allowed me to go through it, you're going to take me through it. Oh, glory be to God. Aren't you thankful for that? It's the way we put ourselves into it. You know, the energy you put into what you believe shows whether you believe it or not. I'm amazed that people don't even read the Bible. They don't read the message. They don't listen to the tapes. They just take our word for it. Well, God challenged me on that, Brother Terrence. He said, how do you know that man's telling you the truth? If you don't read and you don't study. You don't. You think you can remember stuff? No, you can't. But I'm glad there's something on the inside because this thing is so close. So close. They see the very elect if it's possible. Your attitude said, should be God, keep me aware and awake to your promises. Oh, hallelujah. Let me have the attitude to believe you even when it looks like there's no way it can happen. Knowing that God You'll make it happen. I like what George Mueller said. He said, God specializes in the impossibilities. He said, all things are possible to them that believe. Then why are we not seeing those things? It has to be our attitude toward what we hear. We'll say, well, that was for Brother Donnie, but it wasn't for me. It was for me too. Brother Brown said, if God ever done it for one person, if you'll come the same way, he's obligated to do it for you. Ooh, boy, I took to that. I said, Lord, whatever. You know what? I'm not jealous of people that's higher up than me. A lot of people try to pull one another down. I want to, I want to know what they did to get there. Well, how did they dedicate their life? How did they pray? What did they do to get there? Lord, I want that. I don't want their position. I want to know how to get there. I'm looking. What did he do? How did he do it? How did he get there for that promise? And Brother Sam, I'm determined to get there. By God's grace, I'm going to do it in spite of myself. Self will tell me you can't do it. The inward man says you're more than able. It's your mountain. Look at Caleb. Even when he got old, he never forgot the promise of God. He said, give me my mountain. Huh? Me and us have been around for a long time. We're getting old. Things are happening, but I'm still crying. Give me my mountain. That's mine. That promise is mine. You promised it, God. You said it in your word. Yes, sir. That settles it. You said it. Right. You're more than able to do it. Yes. You think COVID has slowed God down? No. Not even. He ain't even caught him off guard. He's like, I'm allowing this for the people that really don't want to come. 
Now they have an excuse to stay home. Watch it on the stream. I know some people are sick and you can't come. But I mean, when you get well, why are you still home? Why are you still at home? Are we at the movie theater? We popping popcorn. We drinking drinks. We doing all this and watching. All... Is that the way we approach God? Is that the attitude? What are we looking for? What about when we, when we can't come? Are we still praying for the pastor? Are we still praying for the church? God move. God move. I remember doing, through that pandemic when I had, was at home, Brother Terrence and I had a screen. I was praying, oh God, I don't have to be in that church. I am the church. God, I'm required. I, I desire you to come to my church today. I am the church of the living God. This building is not the church. You are. I said, come to my church. And preach to me right here. You know what? I got it results. I said, oh, God. My wife would tell you, he'd come down in there just like I was sitting there. He walked by, touched me. I said, oh, Jesus. I'm so thankful that you're the still the faithful high priest that can be touched by the feeling of our infirmities. So thankful for your grace and mercy. Do you know our attitude is the great determined, determining process of our life? Your attitude. Your attitude. Do you know when John Glenn was coming into the earth, people thought he was talking, they said, made a mistake. They said, he said, they told John, get your attitude right. They thought, well, it should have been attitude. But there was three stations sounding, and they had to get them all in order to come down to that right one. He had to have his attitude. If he said, well, this one's stronger, or that one's stronger, but he had to have his attitude right. He had to obey what he heard. That's why they said, get your attitude right. If you want to get out of here, you better get your attitude right. I like a little parable said about a man, uh, uh, Grandpa. He was always so grumpy and grumpy about everything, fussed about, grumble, everything. Said his grandkid come, Brother Sam, and rub some of that old mustard that stinks. I don't know, Limburger cheese or whatever, horrible smelling stuff. Smelled like rotten feet or whatever. And said he was asleep and he woke up and he woke up with the attitude. Man, this bedroom stinks. Walked in the living room. Man, this living room stinks. Walks in the kitchen. Wife cooking. Man, that food stinks. Walks out on the porch saying, man, this whole world stinks. You know what? The problem was he was the one that was stinking. Sometimes we... We point out everything else is stinking, but it's our stinking attitude that determines what we are as Christians, our attitude toward one another. Brother Brown said, listen to this. Brother Brown said, in proving his word, before we pray for the sick, we've got to get the people in that attitude. I believe that's why we don't see as much more than we should. He said, it's the attitude that always brings the results. My, if you never hear nothing, it's the attitude that brings the results. Job said, do you slay me? Yes, yeah, trust you. And the end result was greater than the beginning. He got back everything he had and more. If the rich young ruler would have just given what he had, he'd have got back that and more. He'd have had eternal life plus. You don't need a plus if you've got eternal life. You've got it all. He said... It's the attitude you take towards God that brings the results. Improving his word, he said, it's your approach. Your, the attitude is what it takes. And what it, what it is tonight, dear friends, it takes the attitude. We are, and we believe that we are in the presence of Jesus Christ. We believe that right now, don't we? He said, but it's your attitude that brings the results. The mechanics is here. The dynamics is here. If you can just get started, God will do the rest. Just say, I believe it. Start walking. Brother Brown said, you want to get healed? See a healed body and walk toward it. Get one foot in front of another. That's what he promised to us, Brother Sam. He promised us that. It's your attitude. Well, God healed that one, but... I reckon he can't heal me. No, he can't with that kind. Brother Brown said, if you don't believe, if Jesus Christ stood here, he couldn't believe you. He couldn't heal you because you don't believe him. Oh, hallelujah. Harvest time. He said, and he said, in his Bible, that 
He would judge the world by Jesus Christ. And we read here that Jesus Christ is the Word. In, in Hebrews 13.8 said, He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. It said, so therefore, he will judge the church by their attitude toward Christ, who is the Word. Well, I don't believe that. It said, be baptized. We'll just baptize in the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Go ahead. Attitude of those apostles, they did what he said for them to do. Do you think they would go contrary to what he said after they received the Holy Ghost? They were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, Hallelujah. Ain't you thankful for the grace of God? He said, now I think that's all right. If, he said, if a woman wants to dress and make themselves look decent and clean, ladylike, why well, I think there's nothing, nothing to that to me. He said, but when you get to going to that thing into making it a little pride, then you're wrong. It's your attitude. Everybody look at me. Look how I dress. Look how nice I got. Look at the car I have. Look at the house I got. What's that got to do with it? What's that got to do with anything? That don't mean nothing. God, God ain't temporal. These are all temporal things. It's good that we have nice things. I don't regret. I'm glad. I got the attitude. If God's blessing you, Brother Terrence, praise God, I want him to. Because you know what? When he blesses Terrence, he's blessing me. I'm part of that body. See, if we ever get that, we'd quit acting like we do. We wouldn't be jealous. Who's the best preacher? Who's the most dynamic? Who's this? Who's that? We just say, God, use us. Use us, Lord. Hey, don't, if, if, it, if Brother Sam's preaching, I want to be the best blocker for him. If Brother Aaron's preaching, I want to be a blocker. I love to block. If you've ever been around me and I ain't preaching, I love it. I tell you what, I like hitting Satan because he's paying attention to the preacher instead of me. And boy, I like to play dirty. I like to take his knees out because he's running after the preacher and I will chop block him. I told him there's no rules in this. No rules in this. And he would do you the same way. We block his. We all have the same desire is to get people to Christ, to make the rapture. Our attitude. Do you know your attitude determines whether you're going to the rapture or not? Hmm? If you, are you in a rapture attitude? Do you wake up looking for the coming of the Lord? He said He's only coming to those who are looking. We say, oh, well, you know, maybe you'll come. Maybe you won't. Well, you're going to be like the, the five foolish. The five foolish. What, did the five, what was the problem with the five foolish? They had the lamp profession. A lot of people had the profession of this message, but they never actually possessed it. They had a profession, Brother Sam, but they didn't possess it. They had the lamp profession, but they didn't have the oil possession. See how key the Holy Spirit is? We got to have the Holy Ghost. We got to get it every day. We got to have a refilling, a refilling. When I come to church, I said, oh God, run it over. Run it all the way down the saucer. I don't mind licking on the table, Lord. Give me that oil. Because I know that oil is what's going to get me out of here. Let's stand. What's your attitude? What's your attitude toward this message? What's your attitude toward your brother and sister? What's your attitude toward the people? Your attitude determines where you're at. The promises are still there. He said, I'm the Lord thy God that healeth thee. And he never changed his attitude. He said, I, he that believeth on me shall be saved. And he that believeth not is already condemned. You don't have to condemn them. They don't believe. They're already condemned. We don't have to fight. This message did not come for us to fuss and fight over who's right and wrong. I can tell you who's right. Jesus. I like what Brother Bram said about attitude. He said he'd come to that one preacher. He said he had the truth, but he had the wrong attitude, the wrong spirit. He said, but I went to another man. He didn't have the truth like we do, but boy, he had, that. He had the right attitude. He said, God can work with the right attitude. He can change. If you've got the right attitude, God can work with you. If you don't, I'm right and everybody else is wrong. I don't know about that. I thought Jesus was right and the rest of us was wrong. And that's why he died, because we was wrong. While we were yet dead in sins and trespasses, he died for us. He come to change my and your attitude by giving us the Holy Spirit. Look at the attitude change in Stephen. 
When Jesus was on the cross, he said, Father, forgive what they do. Stephen preached them a message. They was happy till he told them what they was. Then they stoned him, but he still didn't change his attitude. He said, Father, lay not this charge to them, for they don't know what they do. The, same, the Holy Ghost will produce the same attitude God did. Every head bow, every eye closed. Who will say then, this afternoon, say, God, I need an attitude adjustment. Lord, I, I need my attitude changed. When I at my everyday walk, I want the right attitude. Because I know if I've got the right attitude, every divine promise will come to pass because you said it. Father, Lord Jesus, I pray, Father, you'd minister to us, Lord, as we come to an end to this service, but never an end to you, Lord. But Father, I pray you to check us, Lord. I'm asking you to examine from the pulpit to the back door. Lord, if there's any kind of wrong attitude, anything that's besetting us from running this race, I pray right now you deliver us from it, Lord. I pray, Lord, you'd sweeten our tempers, sweeten our attitudes. May you fill us with your love, Lord, that we can love one another and love our enemies. God, help us this day with this, Lord. Touch Brother Sam. Lord, I believe you're doing the work with him. Lord, I thank you for what you're already doing, and I'm claiming what you're going to finish. God, you're going to finish what you started, Lord. Each and every one of us, you're going to finish what you started, God. I'm thankful, and I want to praise you for that before I leave this pulpit this afternoon, God. I want to thank you for what you're going to finish. Lord, I'm a work in progress, but thank you, Lord, that I can hear your voice when I get out of line telling me to recalculate, get back in line. Oh, God, that's what your prophet said. That voice, some of it was straying back to the side, but you used his voice screaming, stay in line, little bride. Stay in line. Follow the Lord. Be diligent. Stay sincere. Stay humble. God, help us, Lord. Strengthen us. I pray you touch everyone that's in need. Those that are out there listening sick. Oh God, may you step right in there right now. Father, may their attitude be such a way that they'd give you such an invitation that you'd have to come, Lord. And Father, we thank you for that, Lord. That you're so mindful of us, Lord. You give us everything we have needed with the Holy Spirit. Don't ever let us forget what you've done for us. Don't ever let us look in this Bible and never look at ourselves. It's what Satan tells us we are. But let us look at what you say we are. Let us keep the attitude in what you told us we are. That's what we will be because you said it and you will fulfill your word. We ask it in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. You love him? Amen. Amen. How could you not love a God that will supply all your needs according to his riches? You know what? A lot of times we're not, we're not supposed to be moved by what we hear. We're not, a lot of times we're not supposed to be moved by what we feel. We're not supposed to be moved by what we see. We're supposed to be moved by what we believe. If what you believe does not move you, you need to have an attitude change. God bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Brother Sam. Amen. Amen. Do you believe it? Amen. Then I believe it too. Amen. I believe it because it's the Word of God. Amen. Let's sing and worship and have a good time in the Lord. Amen. And just praise the Lord. Number 554. Go ahead. The next hand you shake could be the hand of the Savior. The next step. streets of purest gold what about it? your next meal what about it? could be the marriage supper and the next voice you hear could be him saying well done the next hand you shake step you take could be on streets of purest gold your next meal
could be the marriage supper. See if there's anything needed. The next voice you hear could be him saying, well done. The next hand you shake could be the hand of the Savior. The next step you take could be on streets of purest gold. The next meal could be the marriage supper. Say, Amen. Well done. If you enjoy the message, let's give our brother a good hand. Give him a good hand because we believe in it. Amen. We believe in what he sees. Amen. We see it. Amen. We see the Lord for what we need. Amen. Amen. Anybody have any need, anything? If we go downstairs and we will... We'll continue the services down there with the, with the, anybody? Okay. Let's just be dismissed, go downstairs now and we will we'll go through the shower. Father, we thank you for the message we've heard today. Lord, two fine sermons. We, we need you to make it live now. And Lord, just carry us on to the great by and by. Father, just be with the church, be with each one, and unite us all together in Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Wherever I go, I'll praise Him whenever I can.